Another yeah. good word as well is um, like someone's name yeah, is exactly. their pronoun. Yeah. Mm. Like Ooh. you can use the yeah. name as a yeah. pro Like if mm. you know that person personally and you know what they like to be called as a name and you're way more comfortable and it's way easier to remember that, then like exchange their pronouns for their name every time. Yeah. And then like you completely avoid any of the gendered stuff anyway mm -hmm. and it like makes it a lot easier just in case when you're like starting off and you can't quite mm -hmm. get to the point where you're like oh okay like i will yeah. always call you they names names also do the thing yeah exactly yeah, yeah there's, so, a, there's, yeah. Lo there's, lo there's lots of ways around it and mm -hmm. i think i don't get annoyed at they from people that don't know me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like sometimes it'll be a little bit annoying with like people that are my friends and could ask me what my pronouns are but because i'm non-binary now they'll just, just be like oh yeah they uh, I'm like, okay, no, we're we're a bit more close than this, yeah. but I won't, you know, I won't. And I understand there are people who maybe will get pissed off because there are people who get pissed off about anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like being non-binary is not really about me being non-binary; it's about everyone having the freedom to do the stuff they want, mm -hmm. and not just the freedom, but the the brain to to realize and question the bits of themselves that they have not gotten to explore because of wh who they were mm -hmm. told they are. Yeah. You know, it's not that everyone is non-binary or everyone needs to be non-binary. Mm -hmm. It's that That's everyone that. has little bits that they maybe haven't poked at no. mm -hmm. because of expectations or whatever it is. Are you truly free if you can't, ex if you can't explore what you might feel like in a skirt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of like non binariness not really being in in my personal perspective, not really being about, you know, what whatever you call yourself or your pronouns or whatever, but being more about allowing everyone the freedom to do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree. Feel, and like, I remember when I stopped shaving, you yeah. know, for the first time. Whenever I was around people, it would feel very bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until it felt really good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is that kind of the initial awkwardness is is um you know and that's like okay. and, and obviously like I, I i will respect people's rights to do whatever they want with their body but when i meet like when i see like a very a feminist show that's very feminist but everyone's fully shaved i'm like okay yeah we can talk about these things absolutely but mm -hmm. there but have you gone through the process of allowing yourself to be in this space like everyone gets their choice but there's a choice that's easy to make yeah you know mm -hmm. there's one side that's been exponentially weighted mm -hmm. yeah to be um easier and more happy automatically yeah. yeah you know and sometimes it does take going through that it, what might be that initial awkwardness in order to explore and to feel comfortable in this other yeah. you know space like yeah, then, allowing yourself to chase that happiness through awkwardness yeah, yeah you know like that's some teacher that tells you that you can't play with this toy you can't where this thing be like the road that like stops you from like knowing that part of yourself yeah because yeah. that part of yourself also deserves expression yeah like mm -hmm. especially since you exist once and then time ends and then like <laughs> <laughs> God, you get sex is social so fast. Uh, I'm always like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, like, you yeah, exist and then, once and then time ends. And then, and then you're 87 and, and you're so like, finite. and then you're 87 and you're like, oh fuck, I think I was a girl. I, I would want to really quickly mention the fact that our government doesn't recognise us. Yes, oh yes, yeah, yes, that's yes, annoying. All, and whether or not we get our like rights not to be discriminated on the basis of being non-binary or not is yeah. still yeah. very much debated. Yeah. Oh, really? um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Especially in Britain. Yeah. And, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Some uh, there are. You'll often come across policies um, that that really feel they need to hinge on the fact um, whether or not somebody has a gender recognition certificate plays a big part um, in in the way that some companies navigate mm. whether or not somebody has a you know a, a right to be recognised mm -hmm. um, yeah. and that's a only gets you've given had a little binary bit more of like an experience Just with like GRCs and stuff right like um, kind of like how has that like been playing out because I only actually heard about it for the first time through you and I was like looking it up and I was like oh this is like fucked like what the hell well, they, they did a, a huge um, consultation on it, yeah. uh, and then they decided that, that. Uh, too many um, trans or gender divergent people responded to the consultation. About no, no. themselves? <laughs> Shock! <laughs> yeah, so they, they so felt, that muddies the waters. <laughs> yeah, they felt that the, um, the results of the... Um, oh, yes. Yeah, consultation were, were skewed in some way. They just so happened to be skewed in the way that uh, actually we'd quite like to self-identify. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and actually we'd, we'd quite like to 
have an alternative to the the binary binary, binary, binary. Yeah. um options. Um, Saving. Don't just just don't have gender on the passports. Yeah. And, and uh, exactly. I don't know why they feel the need to gender you at all. Yeah. Like There's a picture of me. My face yeah. is on That's there. That's who I am. Fuck yeah. off. <laughs> but I, I actually find it uh, really quite scary that we're still not um, recognised as who we are. Um, it seems really bizarre considering that there are other countries um, that are able to do this. Mm. Um, and, and we're not getting that really really quite um, freaky and, and scary. And I feel like people don't recognise how precarious a position we're in. I think mm. people think, oh, you're coming in here with your bloody pronouns and you're making things complicated and difficult for us, whereas mm. actually we are in an extremely precarious position yeah. where we get diagnosed and pathologised in the very same way that homosexuality was pathologised. Um, it's already having that journey of homosexuality itself was pathologized and then it was only pathologized if you are sad mm. or distressed about being homosexual and mm -hmm. we have the same thing you are if you are trans Dysphoric. then you are mentally ill and now we have oh if you're sad about being trans then, then we recognize you're, you. then you're mentally ill and actually there's a hell of a lot of cultural stuff that's going to play yeah, into the fact I, yeah, what if that I'm, you are distressed what if I'm like a non-binary person who doesn't really experience dysphoria in that same sort of way but maybe still wants hormones. Like, I, I go to the, the gender clinic and I just go, oh yeah, like, it's not really causing that much mental distress outside of people, like, treating me like a man. But, like, <laughs> but outside of that, like, I'm not just, like, looking at my body like, I need to chop this off, I need to grow this thing. Like, like it's not something that's, like, in my mind in that present way. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, trying to get things like hormones and, like, trying to get the government to recognise something like that is just, like... <laughs> You yeah. always feel like you have to exacerbate it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I have to exaggerate parts of myself. Like, oh, like I've been going by Opal since the beginning of lockdown. Well, I mean, a little bit more recently than that. But yeah, like uh, since the beginning of lockdown, and like um, I know that like there's a back part, there's a part of my mind that knows that like when I go and like apply for like HRT or something, the gender clinic will ask, oh, how long have you been living as a woman? How long have people known you as Opal? It's and then, so gross, yeah, isn't it? Like, I know so many people that are going through gender dysphoria services as binary trans people who actually identify as, as non-binary non -binary because of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're so erased that, that we almost have to use transness as a beard. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's bizarre. And also, I mean, uh, even binary trans people that are looking to get a gender recognition certificate um, will be required to have a diagnosis of gender dysphoria. You have to be sad yeah. about it to be recognised. Yeah. It irritates me. It's like a lot of their rhetoric also hinges on the fact where it's like, oh, but then like cis men will like, you know, play dress up so they can enter women's spaces Look, and then violate. And it's idea. like, <laughs> that's still not a trans issue because that's still cis men yeah. doing shit they're not supposed to yeah. to violate women yeah. like if, if they're the not the it's not the, priest, the same thing you, you're still mad at men you're not mad at trans yeah. women you're mad at men but you can't seem to separate the two yeah because you're a tiff yeah <laughs> and yeah because it's like because it's like essential it's like an essential thing like i think like the binary in the end is like a is a political project like it's a it's always been like a political project in the sense that um Men are like, oh, we need to, like, get women to, like, do most of this work because, like, fucking hell, like, this is, it's, it's difficult. Like, when you're dominating, a, like, a civilization and you're being asked to do the dish, fuck that noise. Nah. I've talked I guess lot. for me, I just, I'm a bit exhausted at the prospect of healthcare. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I've just gotten to a point where, like, I'm just going to do me and I've kind of given up and resigned to the part of myself that gives a crap about like obviously it's worth like fighting for and everything mm -hmm. but like if I spend every second of every day like it's gonna make me sad and it's gonna make me angry and like I'd much rather you know focus on the community that I have around me and get support through people who understand and yeah. people who know me and people who are my friends rather than put effort into a system that's just unwilling to cater to me. Mm. That's how I feel about working in health again. Like, it, it, it frustrates me, but then I also just sort of, like, let it slide because there's so many other great things about being non-binary. I'd rather mm -hmm. focus on the good than 
you know, bash my head against a brick wall, which is kind of what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't occur to me about this gender thing until like I go outside and someone's like, sir? But like, you know, 90% of my life I'm spending around people who already support me in that way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so no one's like, sir. Like, that's just like, yeah. It seems like an outside world thing that you interact yeah. with and you let slide, but yeah, what were you saying? Like, if you surround yourself with those people in your life who mm -hmm. understand you like that, then all, all it is is great. Yeah, I feel mm -hmm. very, very privileged that I get to, you know, exist in an artistic community, which, you know, and even then, like, I wonder if I should correct people's pronouns or even if I care and whatever. But, like, I know that I could have that conversation with pretty much everyone, every single one of my employers and they'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, thank you, yeah. sorry about that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so, like, I, yeah, it's an incredibly privileged position that I get to work in a, in a community and, and, and within a space that, you know, is usually at the forefront of those things. And, you know, even, and of course, there's always, there's always stuff. There will always be stuff, you know. But, like, yeah, I cannot imagine what, yeah, maybe M goes through. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean... There's a lot of context at uh, work where it, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to insert my pronouns into the conversation yeah. and make it about me. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't a lot. Um, yeah. With colleagues, you can remind people every now and again, but it is exhausting and it's not a fight that I often have energy for um, at work. And I get she heard a lot and it's strange, especially mm. if I've had time off. I, I go into work and all of a sudden it's she her and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that is, <laughs> that is how you see me. Yeah. Um, Confusing. <laughs> but then I can come home, you know, yes. to, to you. people yeah. like you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what sounds amazing though? What? Fish fingers and custard. I actually want to try that. No. That no. sounds gross. No. I want to no. try that. Really no, like, like weird combination. I'm all for destroying like... the gender binary. But, like there's some societal conventions that exist for a reason. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not here. Like the separation of dessert and seafood. Exactly. <laughs> Very important. Exactly.